Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing really well today. I'm playing around in Luminar 4 again, and this is kind of a creative monochrome sort of workflow video. I've uh, really developed a taste for monochrome or black and white photos a lot over the last, you know, number of months, a year, whatever it is, and um, just keep exploring different kind of techniques and fun things to do and that sort of thing. And so I thought I would do a, a workflow video. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. Just hit the subscribe button down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the videos. Hopefully they're helpful to you. And in return, if you give me a thumbs up, it's helpful to me because it tells YouTube that you like what I'm doing. And uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment and let me know what you think about this kind of stuff. I'm trying to mix in tips and tricks and workflow and like deep dives and all that. So I'm just kind of a kind of a grab bag of stuff here around Luminar 4. Anyway, let's jump into it. Here's the photo that I'm starting with, and this is a shot in uh, Badlands in South Dakota. And it was late afternoon, uh, sunset was nothing, as you can tell from the light. And I just thought it just screamed for black and white because there's some good texture there, there's some good shape, there's some cool lines, and um, I love road shots. Anyway, regardless, I wanted to make it a black and white, so I did it, I made it into that. And it's quite different, obviously. So I'm gonna reset these filters, then I'll walk through all the steps I took to get that look. Okay, step one was a 16 by nine crop. I just left that out of the video. You can check out my video about the crop tool right there if you would like to. So having skipped that step, the, the first step one here is of course a black and white conversion. So I also did a video about black and white conversion tool if you wanna check it out there. Very powerful, very fun, but I come in here, I click convert to black and white, and it's very flat. And that's one of the things about the black and white filter is you have a lot of power here. You have the ability to bring back saturation if you want to, but as you saw from the final, I keep it completely monochrome. Uh, what I do uh, here, however, is mess with the luminance. Okay, so I gotta look at my notes. So red luminance, I went to about 53. Let me get that up there, something about like that. Yellow, I went to about 55. So there we go. Next, I took the green down. I went about negative 73 on the green. And the next thing was blue, and I brought that up to about 47. So all I'm doing is messing with the light levels of these different colors, which is what the luminance is, and just trying to create a little bit more uh, impact in the photo. But of course, there's a lot more still to do. Okay, next I pop over to Creative, and as you saw, I put a new sky in it. So I'm gonna go Sky Selection, and it's just Galaxy 1. It's a, it's a sky that's included, and I just use all the default settings here, nothing fancy. I really like it. I think this sky went really well with the photo because it has all these little pricks of light, which I think is just wonderful. Instead of a kind of an empty sky with just a Milky Way, it's a whole lot of stars. It's like a super crazy star kind of look, which to be honest, in South Dakota, I have no idea if you can see that, but at least logically to me, I would expect that you could see a lot of stars because the Badlands is kind of out in the middle of nowhere, so you're not dealing with a whole lot of uh, light pollution from a nearby big city or anything, because there's it's not that much there. Okay, now it's back to the first tab, and I'm gonna go to Details Enhancer, and Medium Details, I'm gonna take that to like 32 or something. I'm just trying to create a little bit of crunch in this foreground, because there's, um, there's a lot of texture there, but it's kind of lost, and it's particularly kind of flat looking in the, um, you know, in the current state. So I'm trying to bring that up a little bit. So I don't know how well you can tell, but there's before and there's after. It's a little bit more detail pop. Okay, now it's back to the creative tab and I'm gonna go into dramatic. And here I'm gonna bring the amount up to about 45. And you can see that has a big impact on the photo. As the name implies, it creates some drama. It is a dramatic filter. And in this case, I'm creating a dramatic monochrome kind of, um, you know, crunchy, for lack of a better word, a lot of detail, but I just wanna bring that out, and this kind of scene to me just kind of screams for detail. So I think that's looking pretty good so far. Here's the before and the current state. I'm gonna go back over here to the light tool, and normally in most of my edits, I'll start in light, but in this case, I wanted a monochrome. I knew I was putting in a new sky. Those kind of things I tend to do first before I start, and kind of, I normally follow a little bit of the order that the filters were in, but in this video, I'm bouncing around quite a bit. That's different for me, but it kind of worked for me in this case. So I'm gonna start here with Smart Contrast. I'm gonna go pretty high, something like 70. And um, you know, obviously I'm trying to create a bit more contrast in the photo. Also, I felt like the, the foreground was just not really working for me. Uh, too bright and that sort of thing, so I wanted to create a little bit more depth, and uh, I think the contrast helps. 
And of course, the highlights are a little too bright. I am trying to create a kind of a semblance of a night shot, so I'm bringing the highlights down completely to negative 100, and I think it's looking a little bit better. Okay, now having done contrast there, I'm gonna pop over to the Pro tab and get into Advanced Contrast. And as I talked about in my Advanced Contrast video, which you can check out there, this tool for me is always just experimentation. There are some tools that I know exactly what I'm gonna do, like split toning or uh, some of the color enhancer uh, sliders, but for me, advanced contrast is always just like you move the sliders around until you get a look that you want. And that's kind of how I ended up on the numbers and the figures that I ended up in this uh, in this tool. So I start with highlights, and I came to about a 35 there. Midtones, I was at about a 72, so pretty far over here. And then a lower number on shadows, something like about a 29, something about like that. In this case, I didn't do anything with the balance, but let me show you what the contrast, the advanced contrast filter did. There's before and there's after. It's really not a big difference, but it's just it's just something that I arrived on and I kind of liked how it looked, so I kept it. And this was uh, the the sort of the point in the editing when I was like, what do I need to do? I need to do something different. And so I went over here and got a LUT. So I went to Creative and went to Color Styles or LUT, and I said, choose LUT. Um, and I went down here and I picked Chicago. Um, and the reason I picked it, if you look at the before and after, here's the before and here's the after. It's a little bit more contrasty. I don't know, I just kind of liked it. I left the amount at 30. Obviously you have the ability here to, uh, to move things around as you see fit. I'm gonna leave it at 30 for this edit. Okay, so once again, I'm looking at the before and after. Late afternoon, kind of boring. I like road shots quite a bit, but there was nothing going on, so nothing really of interest. I'm trying to create some interest here. I feel like I'm getting there, but I had a few more things I wanted to do. Now, one of my favorite uh, tools to use is back over here on the Pro tab, and that's split toning, which just allows you to pick a color for the highlights and the shadows separately and apply that color to either one of them. I'm gonna use both in this case. I'm gonna start with picking a hue in the highlights of around 204. I was right in there, kind of in the blues, and the amount is something like about a 19. Um, and I've done this in other videos with monochromes, and what I'm doing is creating kind of a tiny bit of a silvery tint. I tend to think of it as being kind of like a moonlight kind of look, which I think goes well with night shots in monochrome because it, to me it feels like a night shot. It's just a thing I like. No real reason other than I just like it. And of course I do a similar thing in shadows. I come to about 215, and then the amount here or the saturation level is about 17. And so you can kind of see, I can turn this off. The before is a traditional black and white grayscale kind of look. And now when I turn it back on, you can see it's got a tiny bit of silver, but it didn't have a lot. And this is where I might would normally play around with the saturation sliders, but instead I went and got photo filter and did a very similar thing here. In this case, I went to about uh, 15 on the amount uh, and disregard that color. I'm gonna move that. I come over here to about 233 and to me, that was the look that I wanted. It was a combination of photo filter and split toning. Could I get there by increasing the amount in photo filter and not using split toning? Probably. Or vice versa, could I not use this and use more um, uh, saturation amount in split toning? Possibly. But this was just an experiment where I was playing and playing, and I got to where I was like, I really like that color look. And so I just went with both of them. And then here, it was really just I wanted to focus the viewer's attention. And so what I did is I went back over here and I went to vignette. So this is the video weird example, if you will, of where I'm bouncing around quite a bit from tab to tab, whereas normally my traditional edits, uh, I will do essentials tab and then creative, you know, and then portrait if I need something, uh, and then professional. But in this case, I'm bouncing quite a bit. So for vignette, I wanted to go pretty you know, tight-ish, so I think it was like a negative 62, and size about 21, and it's a road shot, so your eye's kind of naturally drawn there, but I'm using the vignette to kind of tighten that up a little bit and kind of keep your attention focused there. I mean, like I said, I think you're naturally drawn there, but I use the vignette to sort of draw attention, and I think it helps here, but I'm not quite done. The roundness, I wanted to go kind of more oval-shaped, um, and, and I said that in a video that I did on vignette uh, right up there, and that is the shape of the vignette I will often use to kind of mirror the shape of the photo. So this is a square, so to me a more oval uh, or oblong kind of vignette shape works better versus uh, if you go to the right and go high roundness, that's more of like a circle. That works more on like a square crop because the circle is more contained by a, 
uh, you know, the, the circle vignette would more mirror the shape of the square, whereas an oval or oblong vignette more mirrors the shape of this photo. Something I think about, I don't know if it really matters, but it's just a thing that I think about, and that's why I went a little bit negative on the roundness to create a little bit more oblong shape to this vignette. Uh, the feathering, I went kind of, you know, 30, 32, 33, something like that. That's just about the transition from where the vignette isn't to where it starts uh, appearing in the photo, etc. And the, the higher the feathering, the smoother or more gradual that transition is. So I, I generally always increase feathering simply because I like a gradual vignette. I don't want a hard stop or any, uh, I want it to be subtle, I guess. It's like I'm leading the viewer's eyes, but I don't want them to really know I'm leading it. I just kind of want them to say, oh, I just kind of want to look that way and then follow the road. Um, and you may do that naturally on a shot like this because the leading line of the road is very strong but uh, I think the vignette helps, and so that's kind of what I was going for. Inner light uh, is pretty much something I use every time, and I went to 79, so pretty high here. Um, but you'll notice that the mountains are getting really bright, which for me um, is too much, right? I mean, it's already a daytime shot. I converted tonight, so let's be honest here. We're friends. I'm making this all up. I'm not trying to say, hey, uh, I was there at three in the morning, and I got this amazing starry sky. This is art. I'm just having fun. Um, but regardless, I want it to mirror reality as close as possible. Um, and those are just way too bright. And the reason is, of course, that I just stuck that vignette on there. So if you look at the before, right, they're a bit darker, more subdued. I think that looks better. Um, and now they're too bright. So this is where I would come in and say choose subject. And in this case, I kind of pick a lower spot here, kind of in the center of the road. And in fact, I don't think that's low enough. I'm gonna choose subject again and come down here. And what I'm doing is I'm just dragging the center of the vignette low. And I think that's gonna help draw the eye. It's also gonna get some of that brightness from the inner light off of those hills because I don't really want it to be very uh, dominant there. And I'm really liking that. The only thing I would do here is I'm gonna go add a new adjustment layer. And that's simply because I want a couple of minor touch-ups, which is I'm gonna go into light and I'm gonna take those highlights down. And in this case, I went negative 100 on those. Then I go into advanced settings. I pull the whites down a little bit as well. You know, you gotta be careful with the whites. I talked about that in previous videos like this one. Uh, you just wanna be careful with the whites. I think it's gonna work fine here. But then I came back to smart contrast and added a little bit more. And uh, I'm just creating that darker kind of contrasty image. And that really got me to my final look. So. Here's the before, late afternoon, you know, pre-sunset, kind of golden hour, if you will. Sun coming from out of the right. Again, it's fantasy. I'm making it up. But I wanted to turn it into something different. And this is my different. And so if you look at the sliding before and after, there you go, before and after. It's quite different. I think it's quite fun. Um, the only other thing I would do is go add an erase layer, and I would pull that tree out and pull this sign out and maybe pull that rock out in a couple of these little spots here that are showing up kind of white. And it's simply because they're a tiny bit visually distracting, especially that sign right there and that tree. I'm gonna go remove those, but that's very simple with the eraser. So I'll go take care of that after the video. But that was really my workflow. Again, just a fun kind of non-traditional workflow for a monochrome, just to create kind of a fantastical, kind of made up uh, monochrome kind of thing that I kind of Im imagined and then kind of uh, put to paper, if you will. Uh, so that's how it works, my friends. That was my workflow for this one. I hope it's helpful. I hope it gives you some creative ideas for a monochrome experimentation. There's a lot you can do in Luminar. Um, and um, don't be afraid to try because you're not gonna break anything. So just knock around, see what you can do and come up with, and then uh, share it with us, right? So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about it. And don't hesitate to share if you think you have friends that would be interested in checking these things out. Thank you, my friends. I appreciate it. Appreciate you watching very much and tuning in. I'll see you real soon. Have a great day. Take care and adios.